Hey everyone, and greetings from London. Well, uh, I've succumbed to the winter weather and acquired a little bit of a cold. I know that uh, UK listeners will think, you know, it's not really that cold, right? Well, to a person uh, used to LA weather, it's a little cold, and I wasn't prepared for it or the rain. However, having a fabulous time and so thankful to be here. You may have seen already on social media, I've had a bit of a health scare with a possible ulcer, and I went to the clinic yesterday, which was uh, a really wonderful experience. The Harley Street Clinic is great. Dr. Ishmael, I'd like to say thank you. You helped put my mind at ease, and even though there's still a procedure or two uh, that needs to be taken care of, and will in uh, all good time, I have been given some medication, and it looks like that will help with the immediate effects of discomfort, etc. Much like the other health situation that we've covered on the show, if you do feel something going on, if you're unsure, if you're a little scared about something, do whatever you can to get to the hospital straight away. There's a lot of options, and I'm still working out the different options that are here, but you know, go to whatever urgent care is available to you and get stuff checked out, because if you don't, it can get worse, and then you know you don't want to deal with it at that point. So it's a lot of ginger beer, uh, Omeprazole, aka Nexium, or uh, Zantac in the interim, and also I have to avoid spicy foods. Thankfully, they didn't uh, tell me that I had to avoid tea because that would be kind of uh, life-changing in a very negative way. So, what are we going to listen to today? We're going to hear the audio from my panel at DragCon UK with the delightful Sophie Anderson and the wonderful Miss Cheryl Hull. And I want to let you know that if you go to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends, you can ask Sophie and I anything you want. That's right, I'm taping a listener questions in a few days with Sophie Anderson. Also, if you go to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends and sign up to slide into the Thunderbuns of Hot Dog Club, you get access to an enormous amount of content. Fabulous, exclusive content, including bonus episodes, listener questions, questions episodes, and of course, movie club episodes. These are all full length, in some cases more than full length episodes. And in addition to enjoying all that fabulous content, you will be supporting this show, which as we've mentioned before, it's your civic duty, right? So, you know, do the right thing for you, for me, right? So there you go. There are a few reward tier options. There's the $5, the $7, and the $10. The $10 is the most comprehensive, the most sophisticated, and the most rewarding. Because for the $5, you get the bonus episodes. For the $7, you get the bonus and the listener questions episodes. But for the $10, you get everything and more, which means the bonus episodes, the listener questions episodes, and the movie club episodes. And before we get to the panel audio, I am so thrilled to announce that when Volatile is nominated for a Queerty Award. So go to Queerty.com if you like. You can access it from there or go to the link in the episode description of the show you're listening to right now and you can vote once a day on every device that you have. And I uh, really appreciate all of your support, your well wishes, and your sweet notes about my medical stuff going on. Uh, I'm sure it'll all be taken care of and I'm thankful to the wonderful people of England for all the helpful suggestions about how the health system works because it can be confusing when you're in uh, another land, etc., even though it does feel like a second home here. You can also vote for Ms. Katja Zamalajakova for Drag Royalty, which I'm doing every day on every single device, even some other devices that I don't have. So join me in the effort. Love you all and enjoy the show. A Russian ballerina stopping on a bureaucrat a perky suburban housewife who just got into scats. Give it a beep, bop, 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 bow, bop, bop, bow. It's whimsically volatile. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce your moderator, Craig McNeil. Hello, DragCon UK. How is everyone today? And everyone here is very lucky because you actually got in the door. So good for you on that one. I'm so excited for this panel. And uh, I can't really wait any longer to introduce my fabulous counterparts, Sophie Anderson and Cheryl Hole. Yes. Please have a seat. Anna, oop. So. Hi, guys and girlies! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, as uh, described in the literature that was handed out earlier, today's panel is about loving yourself, accepting yourself, and betting on yourself, right? Which I think is something that all three of us have uh, been able to get to. Yes! Yes, <laughs> right? Oh, 100%. Like, mm -hmm. I, 
have always just had a positive outlook for life. Like, I have no reason to be negative whatsoever. Any negativity, I just push it away because we're here to have a camp old time. We're here to turn the party. And every day is a new day. So just live it like you're living your best dreams. That's fabulous. That is so awesome. (laughs) And as Sophie likes to say, that's so true. That is so true. I mean, I must admit, when I was in my teens, um, I find it really hard to accept myself, mainly because of other people. Mm -hmm. So I do get that, you know, some of us guys, we will be depressed sometimes. Sometimes we don't feel accepted. But this whole community is about accepting yourself. The LGBT community is, and I found my family and I found my home, and I just hope all you guys feel the same as well. So let's keep staying positive and happy (laughs) and... But, but, you know, we still do sometimes fall prey to negative thoughts and everything like that, too, because, I mean, even with that outlook, and I try to maintain the same outlook. So what are some of the things that you do when you find yourself, you know, kind of in a surprise pothole? Do you know what? There are times when people will try and shut you down. And, and like, sometimes, especially during episode two of season, season one of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, when I had that little mini breakdown, <laughs> and I couldn't go on Twitter, and I couldn't bear seeing people trash-talking me, because I was just like, well, you don't know me. You mm. don't know what I'm actually like. You're seeing something from one, like, narrow perspective. You're not seeing the whole picture. And I was just like, yeah, I'm a lot. I'm bloody Cheryl Hull for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm the dancing team from Essex that can't shut up. So, of course, some people get rubbed up the wrong way. But you know what? If somebody doesn't like me, it's no skin off my back because there's 99 people else in the room. Oh, God, I sounded like Gaga then. <laughs> <laughs> there could be 100 people. That's no, right. but yeah. like, It's a beautiful there's... tribute, by the way. Exactly, Lady Shasha. But no, honestly, one person, why focus that they don't like you Mm. when there's hundreds of other people that love you, support you, and want to bring you up and celebrate who you are. That's right. And sometimes we can can do that to ourselves because we're too familiar (laughs) with it, right? It's too easy to do that because we're, like, used to other people maybe giving us a hard time and we can internalize it and, like, do it to ourselves, right? Oh, that's so true. That is, And I always thought there'd be no one more critical of myself than myself. Yeah, that's true. Um, and also, cause, but I use that. I do use that because I think, right, there's no one out there who says anything bad about me, about in the industry I am, because I am in the adult industry as well. And whoop, whoop, whoop. That's right. Let's hear it for the adult industry. Work, and, uh, no, but it's, it's so great and so positive. And um, I know there are young ones here. So I won't say much about it, um, but sex work is work, <laughs> and I am in the adult industry, and people do look at me a certain way. But I use that myself, and that criticism I use, and I go, "Yeah, that's fine." But this is who I am. This is who I am, and I love myself, and I finally love who I am and what I'm doing. And I know how difficult it can be for you guys to go. Do you know what? I I don't I, I don't really know what journey I'm going down. And it can be really difficult, but we just gotta keep on going. That is the main thing. There'll be little doors that open, some that do close, but we just gotta keep on going, and that's the main thing. Yeah, that is the main thing. And and we all do find ourselves hitting, you know, some barriers or obstacles, but the key thing is to, to surmount them and then figure out how to get around them and everything. And you said that, uh, you know, it wasn't always that easy. Do you remember, like, how long ago it was when you started to, like, sort of wow. latch on to the philosophy that you have now? Well, because because I am pansexual, I knew that from a very young age when I was about 10. Yeah. Um, and it was very, very difficult to come out at school because it's... it's And I would say it still is nowadays. I'm, I, I mean, my son's 13. And I don't know, you know, I love him so much. And I don't know which way he's going to go sexually. And, but I support that. He is such a great boy. But at his age, although my dad was there, he didn't, I didn't feel I could tell him. And I think that's something as a parent as well, that you ought to be very open to that. And, sure. and, and you know, I really put my belief in him. And it was really difficult at school because I did have all that negative energy coming from certain people at school. And it can be really, really difficult. It was only really, I will be honest with you, until I got to my late 20s. Mm. And I thought, 
you know what? I, my family were very supportive of, mm -hmm. of the industry I'm in, yeah. um, which is great. Not so many people out there. Um, and that was, that was the main thing. But I really started to accept myself in my late 20s. I wish I had that confidence before. But if I can, like with my Twitter, many, many of you guys and girlies might see on there that I try and give out positivity. And it's just really to boost and go, yeah, actually, I and go into the mirror and go, I can believe in myself yes, because exactly. I am that good. And, and all of you are. You are that good. And don't ever let anyone put anyone you you let anyone else put anyone down you know or yourself down because you're just going on the next journey and it's so exciting it is and you said something before about being a lot or too much or something and i think that's a common misconception we can have about ourselves because i can be classified as that as well but uh, i think embracing it is the key to not having any worries about that so if anyone out there is a little bit too too flamboyant or you know a little bit too rambunctious or enthusiastic that's actually a gift that's a really wonderful thing. And you shouldn't let anyone make you feel that you're less than because you have an overabundance of something that's wonderful and, and is essentially, you know, a barrel of joy, right? But I do think use that criticism as well. Use it and turn it into something positive. Yes, And right. be like, no, oh, okay, yeah, I, I'll take your opinion on board, but really I won't, and it's, and it's gone, <laughs> you know? So just exactly. see, see you later, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know what? The amount of people that have said to me, Thank you for being you because you've actually made me feel more comfortable in myself. And like having that high energy, that bubbly personality really lifts the room and really brings the yes. vibe up. If you've got five people sitting in a room just on their phones, not talking to each other, that's no party, is it? If you want to get up, <laughs> if you want to dance, if you want to have a chit chat, if you want to have a chin wag, whatever, we're just here to have a good time. Yes, that's right. Great. So have a good yes. time, everyone. <laughs> that's the message of the show and thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking also, I think it's really critical about uh, when you realize that you're pansexual, queer, however you want to term it, you know. So I recently sort of accepted my queerness over the last two years. Oh my God, that's awesome. Thank yeah, you. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, there's been a lot of interesting firsts that have been on the podcast. I don't know if you heard it, but I got a call from the free clinic. It, it was, it's quite fun. But anyway, so, uh, but, so I, anyway, I did. I got a call from the clinic. Where they had some positive test results. So I know there's young ones here. It was something, uh, you know, I was sort of had a cold, a cold downstairs. And, um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> a little bit of sneezing. Anyway, so oh, they called. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> and uh, I found it so liberating and empowering to actually share that on the show. And, um, you know, I got some wonderful messages from people that said that it helped them. Someone had gotten something similar at the same time. And it also helped to uh, reduce the stigma because stigma can be such a killer. But I think for me personally, the whole journey of realizing and embracing something that I was sort of confused about uh, really has been amazing. Because uh, so the interesting thing about the, the bi stuff is that you can know, you can know about bisexualism. Uh, um, but then when you are, sometimes you can think, Oh, but that's not me, right? Because like I was attracted to that person, but I like girls. I've been dating that, so it can be really confusing. So if any of you are struggling with that, you know, it's fine. All of it is fine. And it takes time. It, well, it, that's the it, thing. I'm going to be 44 in February, and this just sort of occurred to me in the last couple of years. Oh, wow. But I feel like the most full version of myself now, and so it doesn't matter when it happens. You know, we'll all get there. So and when you said that thing about, I wish I'd had that confidence back then, I've had that feeling too. <laughs> but really, you only, could only get there when you got there, right? That's true. That's yeah. true. And also, it's things that you go through in life as well. So it can be that you're being, you know, bullied for your sexuality or for a certain profession that you do. And that, and that does happen. That really does. Yeah. I mean, um, I was saying earlier that... I, um, you know, I, I like being with all different people, you know, uh, like everyone, yeah. I really do. And, um, you know, obviously no underage or anything like that. Um, that's, that's important. Come <laughs> Thank on, you, man. Sophie. Sorry, I just thought I'd clear that up. <laughs> no, Sorry so to true. disappoint anyone out there anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I always check ages, all right, so. <laughs> no. um, Can I see your driver's ID, please? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hold on, you're just about to get it out. Let me, all right, okay. <laughs> you were Born in 2001? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, but 
but no, that and and that's that's the thing is I do I love I love sex and sex is such a positive thing. Mm. It really is, and, and it's such a great way to express ourselves. Um, and I put advert out actually on Twitter as you do, um, <laughs> and I I wanted with my one of my best friends Jonas who is um, also pansexual, and I said that I wanted we wanted to do a bit of filming, you know, for our little fan sites and for FTM. So we put it out there. Um, and if you guys and girlies don't know, it's the female to male. So I put, I put it out there and the amount of kind of abuse that I got back, like, oh, Sophie Anderson shouldn't be doing that. You've got to be doing straight stuff, you know, in the adult industry. You've got to be doing... No, hold on a minute. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do, and I'm going to be with who exactly I want to be with, and and that's that's the end of it, really. And I got loads of criticism from that, mainly mainly from straight guys. But hey, to all the straight guys out there, if you are here, <laughs> no, no. But it wasn't just you know. Um, it's just I think sometimes people look at you and want you to be a certain way, something that you're not. And the best way is to learn from that, take mm -hmm. that criticism, and just go. But this is me. Yeah, this but nobody me. in life should tell you who you should be. You should be it with. is your yeah. life. You're in control, and yeah. you have the. You're, you're driving the car. <laughs> yeah. You're driving the car of your life, That's right. and you go from third gear to fourth, and you say, "Piss off." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you give him one of these on the way out of the oh window, my right? Yeah. And now, uh, the, both of you have experienced kind of some crazy Twitter abuse, right? And, and it must be very difficult to deal with that, especially in the first blush of that. So you had that when that happened on the show. Yeah. And then you just described your experience with it. Uh, how would you say that you came to get to the point where you could sort of take on what they say, but just dismiss it as just some sort of like nutter ramblings? Do you know what? I have had very thick skin. Like a lot of people in this room have had a lot of like bullying or picking on from a young age just because we're queer people and we're trying to live our best authentic life. Now, I applied the piss off mentality from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So throughout my senior school experience, I was just like, nothing can faze me. No words can hurt me. No punches can hurt me because I don't care because I'm living my best life. So I have a very thick skin and I've, I'll tell you a little story. When I first started doing drag, I, went, I used to go out to the clubs because I was just like, I'm going to get my face out there. I'm going to have a great time because I'm in drag, twirling, living my best life. I love drag. <laughs> and uh, there was a drag queen in there and uh, she, she was a very notable drag queen. So I went up and I was like, hi, lovely to meet you. My name's Cheryl Hull. I'm just starting out in drag. And she was like, oh, show me a picture. And I showed her a picture and she went, you'll never be anything in drag. And I was like, oh, okay. Now, anybody else that was insecure or was like, oh, I'm not sure if I should do drag, they probably wouldn't have done drag ever again. Mm -hmm. But you've just got to pick yourself up and say, I don't care. I'm going to prove you wrong because no one should tell you what you should or shouldn't do because you are the star. You're a fucking star. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been plugging that all today. But I'm, I'm a fucking star pins at my booth, eh? 29. <laughs> but no, nobody should tell you that. And you just show people, look, I'm going to do what I want to do. And there's no checkpoints in life that you need to hit. There's no marks you need to make. So you just go on your own journey and forget about everybody else. And I think to that point also, you know, you did mention plugging something, which is a reasonable thing because all three of us have found our way into careers doing the things that we love, which I think you can only really do when you're able to sort of grapple with who you are and accept it. And, uh, you know, as difficult as that may be from whatever might have happened in your youth or whatever, yeah. that ultimately will just grow and sort of snowball that whole thing. That's so true, and I think as well, is when you finally do accept yourself, doors open, and you're like, wow. Well, like, and especially, so I will, my own exper experience with the cop destroyers, with me and Rebecca. Woo, woo, Rebecca Moore! <laughs> yes, babe! And do you know what we've like, it's gone from a video that we were basically doing an advert for more um, dicks for a gangbang. <laughs> Wait, I didn't, I'm sorry, this blue material is too much for me. I didn't sign up for, to hear this I'm kind of sorry. shocking stuff. I'm, I'm going to cover my ears, but please continue. But please yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we were, and then it went viral, and it's then, because then, I, what I also I found was, is 
I never felt part of anything until we did that video and then the LGBT community just welcomed us in and you don't even realise how amazing that was for me, me especially, because I was like, I've never really fitted in. I've never really been part of anything. I've tried with and, and people just kind of blocked me and I've really tried and tried. And then there was suddenly this community and I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, I finally fit in. Like people are here and we're all supporting each other. And, and it's like, it's just so great. And I can get excited about it. And I wake up every day and I go, do you know what? At least I know all the community's got my back. Yeah. And that that's such a good thing. And, and also I want you guys and girlies to know that I've got your back. I know how difficult things can be. And sometimes you've got to pick yourself right up from the ground. Um, you know, I've had lots of things in my life where I've had to keep doing that, you know? Mm. And sometimes you think, oh my, I've got to do it again. But you get used to it, you know? <laughs> that's life and you've got to ride it, ride it, ride it. And it's... And it's a, Sure, you do, Roger, yeah. darling. Yeah, baby. It's really the solution to a lot of problems, <laughs> quite frankly. Yeah, you know, and, and also the thing you mentioned about uh, getting picking yourself back up again. We can all hit failures and everything, but the key to that I found for me is that looking at failures is not some kind of horribly embarrassing, shameful thing, but as something to learn from and as a guidance uh, tactic or technique, rather. Oh, totally. I mean, I went through a big period. Well, I, I did dance at university because I've always been a dancer, theatrical person, I did musical theatre and I left and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and I was so confused. I saw all my friends going, well I'm going to go do my uh, PhD and all this nonsense mm -hmm. and I was just like, I don't know what I want to do but throughout my entire time at uni I was so influenced by drag and I was just like so in love with drag and especially drag race as well was coming into its element in 2014 and like the rise of like Bianca Del Rio who's here tomorrow everyone. <laughs> but honestly I moved back to Essex from London, went back home and I just went into a restaurant job just because that was the only trade that I'd worked in. I'd never done retail and nobody would let me have a retail job because they were like, you got no experience. I was like, okay, darling. But I, <laughs> but I, was, I was like, right, I'll just do a couple months. I'll go, do it to Christmas. And before I knew it, I was the assistant manager and it was May. And I was like, boy name, what are you doing, darling? Like, so what I did was I was like, I've had enough. So I quit my job. I booked a flight to LA and I went to see the season eight finale. Now, some of you might have seen me in the season eight finale with Bob purse firsting like. <laughs> and uh, yeah, go, go watch that later. But that trip gave me the momentum to go, you come back, you work on your drag and you make this your full time job. And three years later, here I am in front of a room full of people talking about loving yourself. And I can't right. believe it. Yeah. And you know, that's a lot to be said. That's betting on yourself. That's absolutely betting on yourself. Something that looks like a long shot or there's nothing on paper that makes sense about that. You know, um, you, you probably maybe didn't tell all that many people because you didn't want to hear like people saying, why are you doing that? That's crazy. But you knew deep down that, and you couldn't maybe even define it, but that thing was going to lead you to the next step and to the next step and to the next step. Oh, totally. Sorry, Sophie. No, Sorry to cut you off, darling. Thank you, my sister today. We're sisters. Yes, we're honorary cock destroyers yes! today. <laughs> what did you, how did you describe us, the three of us backstage, when we were talking about the seating arrangements? You said sisters what? Sisters and... Daddy. Thank Two you, sisters everyone. and our daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I never really make an executive plan. I always found my life has this way of just unfolding if I just let it happen. If you're forcing something, if you're trying to make something happen, yeah. like it's always good to aspire, but never go, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Just just let it happen. And I, I, like, I quit my job. Then I had about three months of just working on my craft. I'd saved up enough money to not work for three months. And then I was on Facebook, and then an event came up looking for drag queens in our hometown to do a Sunday night show. And I was like, well, I've got to go for it. And then that snowballed, and then I entered yeah. a competition in Camden because a friend was like, you should enter this. Then that started my career in London. Then people see me in London, stemmed into other venues wanting to book me. And before I knew it, 
I was full time working in drag. Yeah. So if you just let things happen and you're just is it reluctant? No, reluctant is when you don't want to do That's it. Right, what's, reluctant. what's the opposite uh, of that? Enthusiastic? Yeah, you just you're just open to it and you yeah. just let it happen. Just easy breezy beautiful cover girl life, you know. <laughs> And also, you put the intention out there, too, you know what I mean? So you sort of throw your uh, dice in a way, because it's not really, it's kind of a gamble, but it's not. But you did the thing where you flew somewhere, you know what I mean? Or like, I moved to L.A., and on paper, it didn't make any sense financially. But what happened is that when I decided to move, which was kind of made in a very random, not random, actually, very sort of cosmic situation, where my friend Jake from the Scissor Sisters was driving me around L.A., and we drove past the Staples Center. And, you know, the first time you're in a town, you're like, wow, look at that. There's this thing. And I said, oh, Elton John's coming to town October 4th and 5th. And he goes, oh, yeah, my birthday is October 3rd, and they're quite close. And I was like, when am I going to move? And this was June. So I just said, okay, October. And then... Didn't really have all the funds available to do it, but because I was moving at that time, I was going to be looking for an apartment in September. And then another friend wrote, um, looking for a friend on the West Coast who can drive a van on a tour. Uh, it pays, et cetera, et cetera. And I checked in with him, and I said, I'll be available. And he said, great. And it turned out to be the Elton John tour that I was commenting on before. So I ended up on the Elton John tour. And then, and that led to a whole lot of things, you know, and then just moving to L.A. alone. But that one decision has led to everything that's happening now. And it can seem really murky and confusing and scary, too. So, and of course, you know, we're not telling people just like, hey, go nuts and like spend all your money and go, do, go to a show or something like that. Like, obviously have a plan, right? But I mean, or I don't know, maybe we are saying that. I don't know, I mean, we could be. <laughs> I'm terrible with money. You shouldn't ask me whether you should spend it or not. I'm like, live your best life, have fun! Well, and then you're like, oh, I've got to pay rent. <laughs> we'll leave that to next month. We'll just build it up twice. Yeah. yeah. Double right. next month. Yeah, double right. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. up. Yeah. They know you're good for it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so both of you must have had some economic struggles and stuff like that. But what are some of the things you would recommend to people who are maybe pursuing a career in, what they're, they're, in their dream, but are having a little bit of sort of a bumpy road in that, that respect? Oh, wow. What kind of in a financial way? It just or, in a way to sort of like sort of how can people um, keep their focus on their art when they're struggling oh, a little financially? Yeah, it can, it can be really hard, right. actually. It can be really hard just to try and keep. Because I do think it's good, really good to have goals. Um, but just life will take you on different journeys. And the only thing is I, I can say that I do. So... So my thing that I really want to do is to make sure I've got a house for my son when he's older. It's going to be mine, but then it's going to be his. And that's all I can think about is, right, so I go, I go and do my job, whether it's porn, whether it's seeing clients, whether it's doing this, um, whether it's going to clubs. Um, I just know that little bit of money is just going to build up and it's going to be the end result is a house for my son. Um, and of course, if anything ever happens to me, I've got a bit of money in the bank for him. So that's, that's kind of my thing is, I've got someone there who, you know, I think if anything happens to me, my money can go to him sure. and a house can go to him and it's going to be okay. So I think it's because I got that there that that's what drives me. He drives sure. me to be the best I can be and that really helps me. So I suppose it's just finding that thing, finding that thing, whether it's a goal. Um, you know, whether it is a sibling or your child, mm -hmm. I think it's having that uh, that thing that, right, I have, uh, in my head, I've got to do this. Yeah. And, and sometimes I don't feel I don't want to get out of bed. There are times where I feel, do you know what, I just, I've been working really hard, but I do it because I'm like, right, I've got to. You know, with, like I said, whether it's doing the porn, whether it's seeing a client, or whether it's doing like a club night or something, like, no, come on, let's go and let's keep on going because I've got that. And I suppose it's just the motivation and yeah. dedication the mission. as well. You have a mission, essentially. Mission, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you? I have had lots of ups and downs financially. <laughs> I mean, you've just got to take, if you want to do drag, Obviously, I set myself up at the beginning where I had that restaurant job where I banked a lot of money. I could invest into my drag because drag is expensive. Mm. And like to have a passion for something, you want to give it your all. And obviously, I wanted to invest everything into it. And whatever gig I did, whether it was a 50 pound gig or a 500 pound gig, the majority of my money would go back into my drag. Not that it really looked like it in the beginning, but a lot of it, I would drive myself to all my gigs. So the majority of the money I was earning was just going on petrol. And then I'd go, okay, well, 
I've got ten pounds, so it looks like a Greg steak bake. And oh my uh, god, a, I still do that now. <laughs> I mean, I Good love Greg. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, do you shop in Waitrose and m and shares? I'm like, no, no. Audi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good old Lidl as well. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm a bargain bucket queen. Oh, yeah. That's, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same. But petrol's so expensive. Oh, my God. Let's just talk about petrol. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bar is a yeah. Another interesting thing you two share is being uh, very tied with the area that you're from, right? Your accents are very distinctive and everything. Yeah, and Dave's. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, Lol. And that's another example, too, of you embracing your full yourself, you know what I mean? Not having sort of any, uh, any not shame, but sort of like um, weirdness about that, which is great because why? Because some other region puts down an accent or something like that. It doesn't make any sense. I think there's so much stigma around different regions and areas. So, like, people think, like, Scousers just walk around with their hair in rollers and they're just swearing <laughs> at people in the street. And, like, Essex girls are just, like, spray tan falling out of clubs, which we are. But do you know what? <laughs> but do you know what? That's what I love. That's what I embrace. And I'm just like, yeah. I play up to the stereotypes because I am that stereotype. And I love everything about it. I can't help where I'm from. I can't help how I was raised. Yes, I talk like I'm common as Mark. <laughs> Maybe me too. Oh, Farmer darling, babe. Farmer. Do you know what? I just love it. And I love who I am. And I'm not going to change myself for anyone. I sound like I'm repeating myself. But like, if somebody was like, oh, why are you talking like that? I'm like, don't care, darling. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Mine's Gert Lush. That's Gert Lush, that is. Oh, cheers, drive. Thanks for that. Thanks for the lift, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. It's funny you should say Lush. Me and my fiancé had never seen Gavin and Stacey before until recently. Don't, 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 don't. He's been a busy boy. He plays on his computer games. But no, so we watched it. And now he'll describe everything. It's like, oh, that's Lush. I'm like, all right, Stace, calm down. <laughs> Oh, he's going all red. Make some oh, noise I for Beyonce Ho, everyone. Him, Round of applause, <laughs> please. Yeah, baby. Poor boy has to put up with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great, though, because he was telling me, actually, about how lovely, how lovely you are and how good your relationship is. And he's it's beautiful. I was like, oh, that's, that's what I want in the future. I'm not well. ready for that yet. <laughs> Do you want to join us, Sophie? We could be a thruple. Oh. Now that's the offer I can't refuse. You heard it first. <laughs> so much breaking news today. It's fabulous. Vanjie couldn't get into town, and this is happening, right? Yeah. So that's uh, fabulous. <laughs> now, what about uh, the aspect as well of um, the romance when you're pursuing your dream? It can, it, maybe it's not the easiest thing sometimes. Go on, Bay. You take this one for a minute. <laughs> so, me, me and Hayden actually met at my first ever gig. So it was the first gig when I was wow. there in Essex, twirling for the first time. It was a Disney and drag night and I went like Minnie Mouse. I looked awful. <laughs> Scroll back in the Insta if you want to lol. But he actually, at the end of the day, I'm going to sound like such an asshole. But he, at the end of the night, went, oh my God, I'd love to take you out on the day. And obviously, at the time, I was so career driven. I was like, oh babes, love you, but I'm just focusing on work at the moment. Because I was just like, oh, that's the idea. And then we ended up working events at least once a week together. And then we'd see each other at least once a week. So we became best friends very quickly, very fast. And then one night I was uh, hosting Shea Coulee at an event. I'm not name dropping by, the way. <laughs> and I normally drive to all my events. And Hayden was like, oh, I'll drive. I'll drive. So I was doing a couple of Patron shots with Shea backstage. And I was like, Shea, you got me drunk. So we were driving back from Canterbury. It's like an hour drive back to Essex. And I was like, you know when you're drunk and you're like, you're either an angry drunk or you're a lovey drunk. I was a lovey drunk that night. And I was like, I just want to thank you so much for being in my life. You're such an amazing person. I couldn't do all this without you. And then we had... We've been starting to peck on the lips as we were saying goodbye in the car. So it'd be like, bye. Oh my God, I just kissed Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. That's not cheating. That's not cheating. <laughs> well, no, you're in a throuple now. Tons. So now you're just, you know, it was It was stuff. reenactment. And then, and then, I don't know what happened. The kiss just lasted a little bit longer. We pulled away. And then I was like, oh, wow, we're together. And then seven months later, we were engaged. <laughs> wow. But, fabulous. But you know what? I have to I have to say, if 
I didn't do the hard grafting of my career at the beginning and was in the club six nights a week and here, there and everywhere, I don't think we would have actually been together, would we? But you know what? I'm not saying that in a bad way, but like, because I focused on my career and then I was able to step back and go, <sighs> okay. And I was like, well, this is the moment. And right. like, when you, when you know it's right, you just run with it. And I'm so grateful for everything he's done. He's bloody quit his job so he can work full time with me. So uh, wow. sorry, about, sorry about the Dr. Martin's discount you've just lost, but you know what? Well, <laughs> You got quite a few good perks, ain't you? You got to meet Sophie and Craig this afternoon. So. <laughs> well, what about also when you're so focused on your career and you're following your dream? Sometimes you know you can end up with crazy hours, or you're traveling more than you'd like to, or you have back-to-back -back gigs and you didn't expect it. But sometimes I find you know you can be like exhausted, but you have that thing like you said earlier when you get out of bed because you have this mission. Right? It, it sort of softens the edges. It makes it okay. You can forget for a minute, but then you're like, you know what? I'm doing the thing I wanted to do, which is yeah. basically, in my mind, living the dream. I think that if you do what you want to do or do what you love, that is the dream. And financial success, you know, that goes up and down. But if you're doing what you love, I mean, you can't really ask for anything better. So, oh, yeah, thoughts totally. On that? Like, when I was so career driven, I used to work at a bar called Her Upstairs in Camden, which is no longer with us. And uh, I was saying, like, it's dead, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was such an amazing venue because it gave me my start. But like, I would end up being there five nights in a row. I'd sleep on the sofa in the bar and then they'd come in and see me and I'd be like, good morning, everybody. Because I was just like, there's no point me going home because I'm going to be back. And then I was like, what are you doing with your life, Shez? Like, you've got a family back home. You've got a soon-to-be fiancé that's waiting for you to say that he wants to be in a relationship with you. <laughs> and you just, you just need to reevaluate and go, right, I've done this. You can actually have some me time. And I think time for yourself and time to focus on your personal life, external to work, is so important. It's because true, yeah. work is great, and especially if you're doing what you love, it's amazing and you forget that it's work. It's like today, I've met so many amazing people, especially all of you that are it's in the amazing. room that I've You're met. You're so here. amazing. And I'm so grateful <laughs> that you actually wanted to come up and see me because I'm just like, I'm little old Chez from Essex. <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't feel like work to me. It doesn't feel like I'm doing 20 hours in drag. It's, it's my passion, it's my life, and you guys have made it my life. So I'm so grateful to you guys. Woo! A round of applause for all of you, actually, you know. Really, how do you feel about that? Me time is something that I sometimes oh, wow. struggle with too, as well. You know what I mean? Like you know what? I find it time. really hard to rest. Yeah. Um, I'm like, right. Um, so, so again, it's um, I've actually moved up with my son towards London mm. because I wasn't spending enough time with him, and I thought, right, how am I going to do this where I'm home every night? And that's what I've been doing. We moved up to London. He he was getting bullied at school, so now he's in a really good school, and um, I'm just really really happy. I come home every night, so I work long hours through the day. So I'm literally I leave about sort of I drop him at school. Work working all throughout the day. I then have a babysitter come, and then I'm usually home about 10 o'clock at night, say goodbye and to bed. And then usually I have weekends. I try and make those weekends off. This, obviously, this weekend, I see all my well. guys and girlies, <laughs> um, and he's on his Xbox, so he's all right. He's like, <laughs> he's like, Mom, can I just use your car just to get this game? It's only 30 quid. Yes, son, you're being very, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Can I order that Papa John's pizza, please, Mum? Oh, Domino's, the app is on his phone. The oh, app good. is on his phone. Stu, he's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny, but it changes scenery sometimes, too. Like, you moved up a little bit closer to it's, London. It's and great, and it is really important. I mean, he's 13, and he's now he's going, he's starting to go, yes, yeah, see you later, Mum. I'm just in my bedroom. Close the door. See you later. I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> really, <laughs> but um, but it's me and him, and, and we're so close. And it, and again, uh, what I really love about our relationship, and I'm just going to go on to that, is the fact I know he can come to me about anything, like about you know if there was something on at school, if about his sexuality, I know he could come to me. And uh, as a mum, that is so amazing. That is just so amazing for me. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that I haven't had any like. Um, let's say, a um, partner in my life for 13 years because I said to myself, I broke up with dad when he was three months old and I was like, 
There is no other anyone else going to be in, in my life or his life that is going to take any time away. Because I experienced that when I was younger with my mum. And I was like, no, that is not happening. So in that way, and I think it's very hard in the sex industry as well. And actually, I would say in, your, in, in the industry of drag is to try and keep a relationship. I, it must be so difficult. One with the hours. I mean, I know I find in the adult industry it's because of kind of the jealousy. Yeah. And and I have kind of dated a little bit before, but not really interested. Mm -hmm. And th and that was difficult. But I bet for you, it's like the time, the time more than anything. Oh, yeah. We've really struggled. When things really kicked off for us, he would do 9 till 6.30. And then he'd come home and I'd be out the door at 8 till 3 in the morning. Sure. So we'd be like, hi, bye. And it was just like we could see things picking up. And I was just like, look, it wasn't. We just put it on the table, didn't we? It was like, we can make it work. He he was basically running my career for me, <laughs> answering emails and doing whatnot. And he's been so grateful, but he was doing two jobs for the last three months. And now, he, now it's his full-time job and we can focus on our relationship and being together because we're together 24-7. Right. And I, oh. <laughs> I don't know what that was, and it wasn't me. <laughs> but we, we're together 24-7. Yes, we bicker. Yes, we argue. But that's just normal. It happens. Mm. But we're just so grateful that we get to actually spend time together and experience all these amazing things together. You know, back to something you said, Sophie, about how your son can come to you with anything. Uh, sometimes people feel like they can't or they don't have that person, and so there's things. And so uh, I think it's an important thing to mention, too. So if anyone here does have things that they don't feel like that they can go to people with there is always someone out there you know what i mean if there's anything if it's depression related or whatever it is there's someone out there and if you just do a little digging you can find it because most of the time people want to help you know what i mean people want to make make uh, a difference in the world in a positive way and, and sometimes the things that we hold on tightest to with secrecy they're actually, uh, once you get rid of that, it's the most kind of like liberating and uh, fulfilling thing. I think so. And, and like, yeah, really, you're not alone. You're not alone. Everybody, you think, oh, but they're doing so much better. And I think you could always be a bit critical on yourself going, oh, yeah, but they're really achieving. I'm not. It just isn't your time yet. And you right. are on your own journey, aren't you? It's just, it's just not your time. It's going to take time. And I think we can all be really hard on ourselves. And also, going on to that, it's like body image. Right. Um, is that the fact is, is that people can look at you a certain way. Oh, I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I mean, it's, it's, I think we put so much pressure on ourselves nowadays. And we that we've got to be a certain person or look a certain way. And... and I, and myself, I get a lot of flack about my surgery. I've had five boob jobs. I'm going to also be getting butt implants um, in February. Whoop, whoop. I you need better a, work. I need, I need a bit down below, babe. I'm like, all this up top, and it's like, oh, oh, hello. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Didn't you say that you felt like you looked like the letter P? I am the letter P at the moment. <laughs> P for... P E N I S. <laughs> um, but no, that, and that's how I feel. And I myself have always loved surgery, but a lot of people don't. And that's another thing online is the fact that, oh, look how gross you look. Look at your lips. I love my big lips, and I'll keep getting filler. I'll keep getting my Botox. I'll keep getting if I want my boobs bigger again. That's fine. But yeah, and I and I love surgery, and I and I not going to go to a point where I look abnormal, but I love it. I love it, I, and I just want what I want, and it makes me happy. So I think as well, it's important that we do things to make us happy, but also try and take some of the pressure off that we feel we've got to look a certain way for people, because it should all be in here. And lots of people are very critical of the way I look. Actually, do you find that because of drag? Do you, do you find that people can say that certain things yeah. about you? Yeah, and to be honest, before Drag Race, I never had any trace of me out of drag on my social media because mm. one, it's an element of my personal life. And two, I never thought I was like an attractive boy. So I was just like, they don't need to see that. You see, you see the queens that like Transformation Tuesday every Tuesday. <laughs> and I'm like, they just want the thirst trap there, darling. <laughs> but, but no, I just never embraced it. And it was through meeting somebody that loved my drag, but also me as a person, I was just like, oh, wow, oh, okay. 
I, I am actually a nice, <laughs> a nice looking person, <laughs> which I find very strange to say out loud. But it's quite funny how you think a certain image of yourself, but the perception of you is completely different by right. everybody else. So your views, yeah, you might feel something, but everybody else loves you. Everybody else embraces you, and they think you're bloody sexy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Well, you know, I've uh, made a lot of leaps and bounds with my own self-image over the last few years, and certainly in the last couple of years, because I've had weight issues throughout my life and everything. Same. Yeah, right? Oh, and babes. so it can really stick in your head. I just look at steak right? bake, and it's like on me. But it's always the places you don't... I'm like, please go to my butt. <laughs> Why do you keep going to my stomach It just for? won't listen. Thank yeah, God for corsets. Yeah. I must admit, I will say over Christmas, I was like, I love my double chin. I was like, I am loving this. But again, it's accepting yourself. You mean the Christmas, the Christmas chin? Yeah, I love Christmas chin. Christmas chin, right? Let's Mine's hear a 365 yeah. chin. <laughs> 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 no, but, but it's true. And I was like, so what? I, do you know what? I'm just enjoying myself with food. Yeah. So, yeah, love it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's so hard on the road to eat well. Because you eat at such inconsistent time. Oh, sure. So you'll finish a show at 2 a.m. and you're like, I need to eat something. Oh, my God, sue me. And what is open? <laughs> Kebab. Literally. <laughs> so I'm like, get me a chicken burger and a cheesy chip. I eat it and I, I fall asleep in 20 chips. minutes. Oh, yeah. Honestly. Uh, the other night I discovered Chicken Cottage, right? So I, oh I was God, staying at okay. this hotel. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> believe me. And I knew. I, I'd walked past the sign a number of times, and I was staying in Holborn, and there were all these fabulous restaurants, and the hotel itself had a gorgeous restaurant downstairs, which I'd been to, but I was like, I oh, don't know, I'm fine. I went to sleep, woke up 90 minutes later, nothing's open, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be Chicken Cottage. Get me some dirty yeah. food. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wolfed it down. It was like, a, it was vile. Like, if there was security footage of it, it would just be like, oh, my God. Like, it looked like a crime. <laughs> That's the best kind of food, though. You know, you know you're right. <laughs> yeah. You know, late at night. Like, yeah. Anyway, so then I had that and then went right to sleep. So it's a good sedative, actually. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Do you know what I try and do? So Rebecca Moore told me about this. She said, don't eat your fruit afterwards. If you eat your fruit first, yeah. and then it will like digest the food properly. Oh, really? So I'm always eating fruit before. And I'm like, aha, my tummy's amazing. Listen, fruit first, okay, everyone? That's fruit the new first, slogan. Babes. Yeah. yeah, to get that tummy going. <laughs> get it going. Does that mean we need to eat dessert first? <laughs> yeah, why not? I think yeah. that, whole, that makes sense. Logically, that follows in that Oh, sense. I'm, I'm savoury then. Sweet, I'm 50 50. You know <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of buy things happen. We've gone off on a tangent, haven't yeah. we? No, we're loving, What's we're everyone having right. for dinner? Oh, <laughs> babes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we had Nando's last night. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. A nice chicken wrap. Right, third row, <laughs> yeah. dinner last night and then the week before. What are you having tonight, actually? Where is everyone going tonight? All at yeah. once. All at once. Tell us. Yeah. Who's going yeah. to a party tonight? Who's partying? Who's, oh, yeah. Who's going to sleep tonight? <laughs> Yes, I love Same. it. Who's, who's going to sleep with some of the night? Yeah. Oh, it, do you know what? There were definitely hands. I saw you. Yeah. I saw. I know what you're doing tonight, babe. And you look like one of the ones from Monsters Inc. You were like, <laughs> yeah. <I gave. laughs> And don't worry, you don't have to stay over if you don't want to, right? Oh, so, I'm the yeah. one with the lips on Monsters, Inc. You know when that thing's coming, it sucks <laughs> in. Yo, so bring that in as a <laughs> reference photo, right, for the next time you're going into it. it. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Me, I'm when also... I don't shave, I'm sully. <laughs> <laughs> so love... is there anything else we want to say about the uh, advertised topic? Being yourself, oh, gotcha. yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. I was just like, for well, no, no. Food, I, I, I mean, like, I'm oh. just as likely to go off further on that tangent. I mean, happy yeah, to. I love it. I think we covered the topic pretty well. Now we can talk about recipes or whatever we yeah. You're gonna love yourselves, guys. Yeah, yes, that is yeah. it. And look in that mirror and go, I love myself. Yeah, it's yeah. really difficult to do, actually. I, I, I still struggle with it. I'm just like, sometimes, oh my god. <laughs> Okay, right, let's go get some small lip filler. I'm all right then, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, do not let anybody tell you what you do with your life. It is your life. Live your best life. And honestly, live by the Shed's mantra and just have fun. Yeah! Yeah, yeah that's so true. So true. And to that point as well, like, and whatever you find that gives you comfort in life, whether it's film, reading, whatever, bird watching, whatever it is, you know, don't feel I guilty do bird about... Watching. Do you? Oh, wow. different yeah, kind of bird. Amazing. Is. I love that yeah. bird, that one. <laughs> yeah, you love a good bird, right? Yeah, nice ta yeah, tasty bird. 
<laughs> so whatever it is, whatever you find that gives you comfort, that's actually sort of like mental nutrition, right? Yeah. Especially so if you're struggling a little bit with any kind of depression or anything, just like lean into that stuff, you know what I mean? So like at recently, the drummer for Rush passed away, and it, it reminded me of how much I loved them when I was a kid. I also played drums, and it was just a wonderful thing to like watch the documentaries on them and everything, and there's no like reason for it. It feels like, oh, I should be working, I should be doing this, but you actually are doing work in those instances, you know what I mean? You're revisiting things that give you support. So, you know, whatever it is that gives you that, give into it, yeah. And give in, get happy. That's the other phrase yeah. I'd like to give you, yeah. Which is yeah. something from my Videodrome days. But so, uh, give in, get happy, and have fun, right? And the party. So yeah, and I think in whatever you, whatever you do, in whatever profession you're in, is, I know sometimes it's gonna be a bit day to day, but yet, yeah, like you said, use that hobby. And yeah. I do find that exercising really helps me. Really? I, I really do. What's that? <laughs> I'm confused as well, yeah, but she's yeah. apparently gonna explain it. Or so go that's... for a little walk, babes. Oh, you know? yeah, nothing more than a brisk walk, yeah, please, nothing. Sophie. <laughs> But and anything really, like you said, to make yourself happy. Yeah, exactly. Because um, yeah. sometimes it can be like from day to day you're doing the same thing. Or, I mean, I'm very, very lucky in my job that I do have all different things, you know, all the time. And, it, and it's really great. Um, but like I said before, I do find it hard to relax. Well, sure. So it's hard to turn I, it off, do, right? Yeah, yeah. I find yeah. it hard to turn off just because I, like I said, I want to achieve things. Um, but also, I tell you what, I tell you what, social media, you're like, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, I'm on my phone. I'm like, right, what can I put on there now? Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it can be sometimes so cons consuming, it, can it? Really it? Can, yeah, because right? yeah. I like knowing about people as well. So I'm like, oh, she's doing, oh, he's doing that today. Oh, cool, you know? So, yeah. But it can be. And I also social media, like Twitter, I do find people so inspiring right. as well. It's absolutely amazing. I, I mean, from I, music, it's, it's amazing. And, like, and you, know, you inspire. When I see tweets from you, I'm yeah. like, oh, Stop yeah. it, Sophie, yeah. I'm blushing. Like, oh, <laughs> 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 and how does it feel to be inspirational to people? You know, and it, it, that can be tricky to realize and accept it, but, I mean, you are, both I, of you. I just think it's mad that... Little Old Shares is inspiring a new generation of queens, queers, and people just, yeah. just from doing what I love. And to be honest, I, I'm not a negative person on social media. The most I'll do is, FedEx messed up my delivery again. That's, <laughs> that's the most I'll do. But like, I don't see the point in trashing people, atting people. If I see somebody sending me negativity, they don't get the satisfaction of a block. They get... Shh, I'm trying to talk here. <laughs> they, get, they get a mute because they disappear, but they don't even know they're muted. So that's, they're chatting yes, away, yeah. they're talking, they're still tweeting. I can't see it, and I don't give a fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you just don't need that negativity. And these people that put negativity out in the world, nine times out of ten, they just want the attention. Yeah. And they want the attention because they're fighting something within themselves because they're not realising that there's something that they can work on and improve and mm -hmm. better about themselves. So, sure, that's the journey they need to do. And sometimes I reply to people, I'm like, maybe next time, don't say that. And it's just letting them know that, don't say that to that person. You get more of a reaction from kindness than yeah. you will with anger and negativity. I think on that as well, it's like, if someone sends me a negative comment, I will literally try and change it round. So I'll go, do, 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 something positive, and then they're, not always, but sometimes I, oh, I'm really sorry. Because I've used my positivity to change them around. And maybe yeah. it's made them feel good that day. The fact that actually maybe someone cared. Mm -hmm. I think a lot as well, it's like the fact people do feel alone. Really sure. alone in this world. And, and like we were saying about struggling with certain things, with certain mental issues, not accepting yourself and worried about things all the time. And I think people then some people get really negative about it and then what a vent and that's the way they do it so you know I don't feel bad about that I then either send them a DM or I'll put something um, actually on online and just change them around and right. I think I, I think for me that's the best thing that I can do sure it's myself. compassion really compassion, compassion yeah. which is sometimes not the easiest thing to have especially yeah. when someone's being uh, attacking you like yeah. Brooklyn Heights talked about on the podcast whimsically volatile by the way if you're not familiar with it already. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, with, uh, also an episode with Sophie and Cheryl will be on soon. So, but Brooklyn Heights was talking about being bullied as a youth and then becoming a bully. 
and then we you know, talked about how, you know, she said that when you're hurting, sometimes that's when people bully. So a lot of times, and as awful as bullies can be, I certainly had had extensive experience with bullies and, you know, a lot of negative feelings about them. But then when you start to have compassion for people that attack, it, it actually kind of unlocks a whole way of thinking and it makes it easier to comprehend and deal with. Yeah, I just think that, um, you know, I just think that those people, there is obviously something there. And I really feel, because I know how I feel when I feel down. Yeah. Um, myself, I wouldn't go and attack. Usually I'd be like, do you know what? I need to go and do something positive or, or make or put a po positive video out or, or something like that. Right. And, it's, and it is. It's, and then, I tell you what, it changes my feeling around about myself or yeah. something that's going on in my life. And... You know, it's it's great. I mean, um, so this week I had um, my little boy's, my, my son's dad, his dad, and he sent me a message going, does your dad know what you do for a living? And, and sent me a video of me and Rebecca, our first cot destroyer one. And um, I just sat there and thought for a minute. I was really hurt to start with. Like, he knew, he knew like, when we were back because I was, like, working in massage parlors when I was 16. And so he knew, but it was that type of negativity because I think in himself, he was like, you know, why is she doing so well? And mm -hmm. so I just changed that around. And I said, do you know what? I said, just make sure you look after yourself and don't, you don't, have, don't have any consideration. Don't worry about what I'm doing because I, you know your son, our son is looking, is being looked after properly. And that's After it. very well, actually. So, yeah. yeah, and, and that's exactly it. So I know, and especially if there's any parents here, is I know, and especially if you're split or you've got family, it can be difficult. Um, you know, and also the right direction, how to go as a parent. Oh, it's sure. like, oh my God, sometimes you're like, am I doing the right thing? You're questioning yourself. So that can be another quite critical thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, am I doing the right thing as a parent right. and all of that? So, yeah. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot to deal it's with. It's a lot, yeah. I mean, everything in life kind of, I mean, there's a lot to deal with, right? So if you do find yourself down, you know, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, That's exactly. the other thing. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times I, I remember struggling with that because you think that something's defective or that you have something wrong because, you know, you're like uh, angsty or uh, ridden with anxiety. And then sometimes you kind of have to go like, oh, it's almost like that's how tall I am or I have this color hair. Like, I'm prone to anxiety. So is my mom. You know what I mean? A lot of times also you can look at your family and see little quirks and stuff that are just, you know, carry-ons. The little gifts they give us, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that makes us who we are as well. Right. I, and I think that's great. Like, in our family, it's like we have a bit of a temper. Oh, so sure. we get to that point and it's like, Ur. but I can see that in my son as well. Uh -huh. But you, I could do it and go, oh, just calm down, love, you uh, know. Uh, 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 calm down. <laughs> Hold on. Hold Ooh. on. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything that you distinctly feel like you got from one parent or the other, Cheryl? <laughs> <laughs> I have definitely got my dad's fieriness and, like, determined. He's like, I will do this. I will get this done. And then I've also got from my mom, like, the, oh, oh, you're so lovely. You're actually like <laughs> and my my mum loves everyone. She sees no negative. She's like the advocate for this blood. She should have been here instead of me. But no, <laughs> she's she's the she sees the light in everybody. And I'm like, oh, you are so lovely, aren't you? So I get that from my mum, and I get my like determination and like thingy from my dad. Anything else, Hayden? That's a great package. It is yeah. a, a great package, package right? there, babe. Yes. The mediocre top four package. <laughs> Well, and who doesn't like a nice package, right, everyone? Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, you don't. Interesting. <laughs> Aiden's mum's in the front row. I'm not going to be talking about packages. <laughs> oh no. It was just Christmas. I mean, I'm sorry. What? Am I? Oh, oh yes. Never mind. I thought Santa's Christmas was big, big here, sack. Yeah. <laughs> More that blue humor again. Forgive me. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> So um, I think we covered the topic at hand, and how does everyone feel about that? Does everyone feel uh, sufficiently lifted up by everything? How about Mike and Maddie, my friends in the front row? How do you feel? Yeah, love to Hull, fabulous, and Lucy as well. 
Thank you. Uh, not to be inside baseball, but anyway. So it's you know it's been really wonderful to be able to do this panel with the oh two God, of you. It's so amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And Sophie, it's it's really been a delight getting to know you and to see you again and getting to know you uh, when we did our show together and everything. And Cheryl, I'm looking forward to more times with you. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. I'm ready for a gossip and a chimwag. Fabulous. Oh, I fabulous. love it. Yeah, I love we'll, it. Yeah. We'll put that all together very soon. Yeah. Yes. In mere minutes. Yeah. <laughs> fabulous. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. Thank and you guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Much. And what, what a great way to close out the first day of the first DragCon UK, right? Woo! We made it! Right. Yeah. Stand up. I, stand, I, I can't everyone. stand up. Wave. Oh my God, I want to see how the outfits as well, because the level oh God, of uh, so spectacular cool. glitter and So many glam davis. Oh, wow. I know, right? Oh. Mrs. Oh. Pink, hey. yay! Yeah, All right. you look amazing! And also the hair is just wow. unreal. It's so good today, yeah. Wow. I guess tomorrow, too. It's, you'll all be here tomorrow, so we'll see you then. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks, everyone, for coming. Have Love a you guys. Rest see you tomorrow. tomorrow. See you all soon. Love you. I need a wee-wee. It's whimsically.